You are listening to Love Your Practice with Dr. Laura Mock. I'm a general dentist, a practice owner, and a certified life coach. I teach women who own dental practices to lead with intention and literally fall in love with their businesses. Keep listening and you will see how learning to love your practice turns into loving your life too. Hey ladies, have you ever been in the middle of a clinical day when your assistant or your hygienist or someone who works for you does something that you want them to do a little bit different? or maybe a lot different. Maybe you're a little bit irked or you're furious. Either way, I have felt the pain of being in the middle of taking care of humans and not being able to take the time right then and there to be the manager as well. And then what happens typically is we get to the end of the clinical day and we still haven't talked to that person about what we want them to do differently. And there's two reasons for that. One is because we really are busy. We really are. But the other one is that there's reasons our brain will give us not to have that conversation. It's uncomfortable. And we don't know exactly what we're going to say or how we're going to do it. We don't know how to have a conversation about positive changes that don't turn frustrating for the recipient or for us or both. And the thing is that I have had so many clients come to me and complain about this problem that I have actually made a course just for you, you female dental owners, and it doesn't cost anything at all. <laughs> I made it for you for free. It's deeper than I can go in just a podcast. So what I did was I put a whole course together in a, um, a little online bundle. And all you do is text me to get the course. So I have this number set up. It's 66866. Such an easy number to remember. And you just text the words, love your employees to the number, but you can't leave any spaces between the words or it won't come back. Correct. I don't know what you'll get if you leave a space, but so your autocorrect will want you to leave spaces there. You got to go back in and delete the spaces. Love your employees to 66866. And the next time someone does something in your practice that you want to change, you will have a very easy system that smooths out the speed bumps that our brain wants to put in place for us to not do the thing. But trust me, I have helped many women do this before. It's a tried and true plan. I use it myself text the number, and then I'll see you in the course. Hi, ladies. It's Dr. Laura Mock here, and I am here to introduce to you my guest for the day. Her name is Joanna Scott, and she is co-owner of Studio 88. That's 8E as in the letter, and then the number 8 again. And they are a different kind of marketing agency for dental practices, one that I have personally benefited from. Um, their unique approach to how to uh, help potential patients find you is quite refreshing. Plus this interview was so precious. I actually had to wipe a tear from my eye while she was sharing a client story because it was so sweet. So give a listen to it. It really enriched my life listening to her give her wisdom. And I think it will for you as well. We'll see you on the other side. Okay. I would like to welcome to Love Your Practice, Joanna Scott. Joanna, thank you so much for making the time and the space to be here with me today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me, Laura. It's um, just such a great opportunity to be here with you. And Anytime I can sit down and talk with Laura Mock, I say yes. <laughs> that gives me all the warm fuzzies. Thank you. <laughs> we saw each other not that long ago because Studio 88, your marketing company, did a big photo shoot for me. And it was so much fun. Good. Well, you are a rock star in front of the camera. You're very like zen and chill and fun your photography and videos like everything came out so wow I mean you just wowed the camera like um it was so fun to hang out with you that day thank you I, I was impressed that you could turn something like a, a content creating session into something so 
like fun. You guys do a really good job making people feel special. I don't, how do you do that? What, what is it that, um, that creates that? We love creating experiences, you know, and, and we create them hundreds every year, right? You know, our teams go to the dental practices and, you know, create content for them there, or we have dental entrepreneurs like yourself and you're also a dentist, but fly to Columbus. And so we create these experiences in Columbus, Ohio, where we're based. And, you know, it all just begins with like getting to know that client and not only dialing in, you know, their aesthetic preferences and, you know, um, wardrobe preferences and design preferences, creative preferences, but even just down to, we want you to have fun and to relax when you're there and to not have to, have your head in the details and worry about anything going on. So we try to just cover all the bases because if you think about it, all of us, especially women, are programmed to take charge of the situations we're in and always lead typically and handle all the details. And so hopefully those are, we're creating experiences where you can come in and relax and have a lot of fun. I agree. I felt like everything was taken care of for me. And that's unusual because, you know, usually the moms, the moms do that. They're like, does anybody need a snack? <laughs> yes. We walk around with our bags. Full of our sunscreen. <laughs> Arsenal. Yes. You totally. have a booger underneath their nose right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I usually have to prep clients and tell them, you know, hey, I'm actually going to we're going to carry your bags and your wardrobe, you know, into the studio. I actually want you to just to, to be, that's probably the best way to describe it. Just be, and, you know, our photographer and videographer are going to help you just for, be at ease and hopefully feel like yourself, you know? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And, um, your photographer just, oh my gosh, I just kind of just wanted to take her home with me. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, the whole team right but anyway we kind of jumped right in like um let's back up for a second how did you get to where you are now where you're helping dentists to do a better job than like the industry standard I'm using air bunny or bunny quotes here um do a better job of like telling potential patients who they are how did you get where you are now yeah uh well I think I mentioned, you know, this earlier when we were chatting, my path to dentistry was definitely unconventional. Um, and I'll just share a, a short story. In 2016, I was at a professional crossroads and my background is in the nonprofit sector. I had just been fired from an executive position from a large church. And I really had at that time, like I found myself working for a narcissistic man. I was experiencing burnout, emotional abuse from him and was faced with leaving a community of you know, um, people and families that I loved without warning or reason. And that path, um, the path following that experience was incredibly painful, but it, you know, it also pushed me to pick myself up and revisit my dreams. And so at 40, I went back to school. I finished my undergrad degree, um, in organizational management. And some people are like, what the heck is that? Basically, I'm very good with details, overall strategy, and pulling like the resources together to help um, organizations accomplish their goals. And this led to a profound conversation with Josh Scott, my husband, who had just started a company called Studio 88. Um, and we call ourselves Dentistry Story Driven Marketing Agency. So we talked about the fact that I could go off on my own, like I had been most of my career, and we also talked about what if we, what it would be like, what would it be like if I decided to run fast alongside you and we teamed up and grew this together? Mm -hmm. So in 2018, I joined the team as business development director. Um, I'm also on the front lines of recruiting all of our new team members and it's been a ride. And I'm, I'm super thankful um, for my entry into dentistry, you know, and for all of the amazing people that I get to meet and hang out with, like you, um, and just for our awesome team, like I'm so humbled by it, honestly. Mm -hmm. It sounds like you're very motivated by the relationships that you get out of the path that you're on right now. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that is my, I am in the, I, I'm around, you know, 
like say like I'm in the people business, like business development, right? It's all about creating relationships, even apart from the business side of it. I personally crave authentic connection with other humans that are awesome. And I'm a huge advocate just for putting your story out there, for putting vulnerabilities out there, because I believe that it creates, um, it's like the universal language for connection, right? Mm -hmm. And so I love that, you know, day in and day out, I get to do that. And obviously when we host clients like you and you get to come, I get to, you know, typically hang out with you, either grab a glass of wine or, you know, go to dinner and just, you know, those kind of things like make the world go around. They do for me at least. (laughs) Yeah. I can only imagine what it would have been like for you before you went back to school working for a narcissistic man. I mean, I'm guessing that there are some of my listeners who have been through that before they decided to start their own practice. Mm -hmm. I know this is off script, so please forgive me, but like, how did you know he was a narcissist? What did did you have to go through a bunch of painful, like feeling guilty and confused for a long time before you figured it out or? Yeah, that's such a great question. I did it about your strength. Yeah, I did it. I didn't know at first, or else I wouldn't, I would not have accepted the position. Mm -hmm. And when I first started, I think it took me probably at least two years of working there to finally, I started noticing really unhealthy patterns um, where he would pull people into his office alone and basically berate them. And, you know, they would come out, you would hear it. He would get really loud. And then obviously whoever was in there that team member was just being destroyed emotionally and verbally. And, you know, it was highly abusive and inappropriate and unprofessional. And he would just take, you know, um, his paranoia out on them, his fear of whatever, you know, in the moment, I I think he always lived with this thing, like somebody was out to get him. Yeah. You know, and he would project that on everyone else. Mm -hmm. There was such a lack of trust on the team. And so it created this culture of fear. Yeah. And I think each of us, I started to watch, I mean, these were incredible people that I was working with For colleagues sure. yeah. and they were just disappearing. And so I was probably the, the fourth fire by the time he got to me. And really I had just started asking too many questions and he did not like accountability. Yeah. And, you know, some of that was financial questions and among other things. Um, but I, you know, I, started to find myself in a room where he was, you know, really berating me and Mm. just picking apart over time, like my self-esteem and my self-confidence. And I remember when in the room, which was a complete blindside that this was happening, I was executive director of the entire church. um, And they had no reason for firing me. Um, I was working circles around really everyone else. I was working too hard and that's a whole burnout conversation Mm -hmm. journey I could go on. But, um, in the end, the last thing he said to me is, you know, what would you even do here anymore? So he, you know what I mean? So that's the type of, it's interesting. You know, I've talked with a lot of other women, dental, dental owners, dental practice owners, and it's so crazy how so many, um, so many of them have been like through their associate years uh-huh. have for incredibly narcissistic male um, bosses. Yeah. Would you say that that has influenced how you lead your own team? Definitely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I went through a good, you know, obviously I went into Um, found a therapist after that and, um, you know, worked on so much inside of me, because I think one of the biggest things that was concerning was I had my head down working and I was missing some of the signs that were right in front of me, like some of the red flags. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad now that I was fired because I wonder how much longer I would have just tried to endure. Mm -hmm. Um, I think one of the things at Studio 88 is we're really careful to not we don't call everybody like, oh, this is a big family and, oh, you're a lifer and using absolutes like that. What we prefer to say is 
we hope this is one of the most amazing jobs you'll ever have. Mm -hmm. It may not be your last job, but we want to set you up to win and thrive and use your gifts here, mm -hmm. but we don't own you. And so I think that there was some of that um, type of vernacular. Yeah, <laughs> Did you get interrupted by some AI there? <laughs> Siri, that scared the shit. <laughs> that's fine we can edit like, oh my gosh <laughs> sorry sorry <laughs> so so, um they used vernacular like that and he used the lead pastor used vernacular where it was like oh you're a lifer oh you're not oh you know we're a big family and I'm like no we're really not and actually when you use the word family there are so many people that come from dysfunctional childhoods that I think that it's actually can be somewhat triggering to any given person, depending on what their background is. I agree. And this is a little bit of a tangent, but um, as a coach of female leaders, one of the things that I always emphasize, and it's fascinating how many of us get into this mistake, I always have to remind them that their team is not their tribe. Mm -hmm. because we seek we do behaviors with our tribe where we seek acceptance and um and like um confirmation that we're good mm -hmm. but if we act that way with the people that we lead we're not being our best leaders right we need to go home and have our family and our friends be our tribe and that's not to say we don't care about how our team feels, because of course we do, but we can be better leaders if we're not depending on them to verify that we're good people. Totally. Yes. I agree with that. They like such a mistake. Completely. Mm -hmm. Just setting appropriate boundaries for where we get that validation. Exactly. Yes. We need that validation to come from not our team, because otherwise our team is going to manipulate that. And it won't go well for somebody. 100%. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we agree on that. <laughs> okay. Moving on. I want to hear more about what you mean by story-driven marketing. Because, you know, when especially when I first bought a practice, um, it was more about, well, how many new patients can I get? And it's like, you know, Hungry Hippo. Remember that game? And you're just like grabbing and pulling towards you. And you're just grabbing everywhere that you can get one of the pieces of hippo food. I can't remember what it was, but, but like, it's a random, you know, Ooh, you need a dentist. I'll be your dentist. You need a dentist. I'll be your dentist kind of thing, you know? And I feel like story-driven marketing is the opposite of hungry hippo marketing. And I want to hear <laughs> <laughs> more about that. That's like my favorite analogy ever. I'm going to use that. That's okay. so fun. I actually used to love that game as a kid. Me too. It was amazing. Uh, yeah. I might have that in my basement. I might have to bring that out later for my <laughs> teenage kids <laughs> just to freak them out a little. <laughs> like mom. Mom, this is weird. <laughs> so weird. Yeah. Mm. Well, it might help if I tell you kind of why we got into uh, why Studio 88 exists. And nine years ago, we, you know, noticed a growing problem in the dental profession, especially when it comes to marketing. Dental marketing sucked. I mean, especially <laughs> nine years ago. And it was really lacking, full of stock photography, templated websites. You know, everything was like a click through funnel and it wasn't telling dentistry's beautiful story. And dentistry is an inspiring profession. I say this all the time. It's, you know, full of human serving humans with some of the most incredible hearts of people that are on a mission and dental marketing should represent that. Um, so we launched Studio 88 to change that. We work with dentists all over the nation and help each of them develop a custom digital marketing presence with a focus on story. So we found that story and connection build trust with patients. And you and I have talked about this so many times, but we are all craving authentic, real connection online more now than ever. Um, and that's really why we are champions of story in your marketing, um, why we believe everyone has a story. You know, we, we sometimes hear 
a conversation or we get feedback like, well, I don't think my story is unique enough or special enough, you know? Oh, it's not like hers over there. I guarantee you that if you work with the right people, you know, you can discover your story. And I guarantee you that each, each of us have beautiful, unique qualities that will help you connect with the patients you're meant to serve. Do you mind if I build on that a little bit? Absolutely. It's like um, that hungry hippo marketing creates patients who think of you as a commodity. Mm. Like it's, oh, well, how much is a crown in your office? How much is a denture in your office? And creates patients who think that a crown is a crown is a crown right? You're attracting just numbers. But dentistry at its very best is an incredibly intimate relationship. I don't mean in a sexual way. I mean, someone has a trust to you enough to help you make decisions. They're going to spend thousands of dollars with them. And then you're going to lay back after you give them your money, you're going to lay back and put yourself in the most vulnerable position ever where you're just opening your mouth and hoping that the drill doesn't hurt you. Yeah. Right. And so when someone can get to know me before they decide to come and see me and they can look at me and go, she's the one I trust. Mm -hmm. Then I'm not attracting the, a random commodity patient. I'm attracting someone who is looking for what I have to offer, what's unique about my practice. And that helps me because when they come in, they already like me. Yep. They got to know me. They like me. They chose me. We, we're we starting then with a conversation where they've been persuaded to have a trusting relationship with me. Completely. Yeah, I love that so much. Um, I like to think of it this way. You, you and I, everyone listening, we're not like anyone else. So why should our marketing look like anyone else's? Mm -hmm. If our marketing looks like everyone else's, how are you truly going to, to your point, connect the, the specific patients you are meant to serve? Um, and there's a quote I love by Seth Godin. He says, all marketing is, is about telling stories. Marketers succeed when they tell us a story that fits our worldview, a story that we intuitively embrace and then share with our friends. Um, if, if your marketing features a list of services where you attended dental school or your new CEREC machine, it's likely to be forgotten. While yeah. those things are important, what gets remembered more is a story that engages with your potential new patients and keeps your practice front of mind. Mm -hmm. um, like for example, if you are a PPO insurance driven practice or you're more focused or are you more focused on fee for service patients? I would imagine your audience is probably more fee for service. So if that's so, you wanna portray the quality of practice that you are and the experience they will have in your practice. So your story or your website will want to showcase your big clinical patient cases, but also define the passion behind why you want to give each patient the confidence they deserve and not only your expertise, but also in their smile journey. Um, stories build trust with patients even before they walk through the door. Mm -hmm. And there's this, this statistic that we love that supports this argument. Um, stories are remembered 22 times more than facts or statistics. 22 times. 22 times. That's amazing. Yeah. That's um, way more interesting than we do crowns, veneers, bridges, and dentures. Which one do you want? <laughs> right, right. But if they can go, if they can go to your about page, you know, your kind of like who you are, which is one of the first most highly visited um, traffic pages on, you know, websites, mm -hmm. because I know what I'm looking for a health professional. I absolutely go and I want to see their face. I want to read their story. Why are you in this? Do you look trustworthy? Mm -hmm. That's the first thing I do, um, even outside of you know dentistry. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a great client example, if you're okay with me sharing it. Absolutely, um, yeah. Okay. Tell so us to get to their website too, so we can okay. see it. 
She's so she's a client orthodontist, lives in Livingston, New Jersey. Her name is Dr. Gigi of Livingston Family Ortho. So she has a powerful story that involves making dental care affordable and accessible. Um, and here I'll just read a snippet of her story because it's so this just kind of makes my point. And this is from, you know, um, her homepage, I think, or either her about page. Mm -hmm. After many years of pursuing my dream, I'm now able to, to create the practice my father never had the opportunity to build. He came to this country with $8 in his pocket, a wife and a baby. Relentless, he worked incredibly hard to become a dentist in the US and eventually bring all of his siblings to this land of opportunity. I carry my father's memory with me every day. He modeled a love for patients that inspires how I treat everyone I serve. My daughter Evangeline will never truly know the man who forever shaped the course of my life, but she and others will hopefully see his powerful imprint through my life. So on her website, there's a photo of Dr. Gigi in front of a beautiful piece of art with a script that reads, a smile opens a door. And that's her practice tagline. And so this simple yet powerful statement established her as the bridge from one side to the other. So her message is really, she wants to tear down the walls that make care inaccessible. And her judgment-free office, flexible hours, and affordable payment plans all serve her story of giving patients a chance at opportunity. And it kind of, yeah, it gives me like chills every time I revisit her story and her why, because it's really the foundation of the patients that she's serving right now. That's awesome. I love that. I got chills too. Will you send me her website address so we can put it in the show notes? Yes. Thank you. And she's also just a gem of a human. So mm -hmm. um, we're just, yeah. we're in the middle of redoing my website too, with the content that you helped me create. And just like, instead of just a picture of me, it's hey, you know what I mean? It's now a video of like, Hey, get to know Dr. Laura. And it's just, um, you're like you said, it's a new level of, uh, letting the patients get to know you before they choose to give you thousands of dollars and open their mouth and <laughs> you draw the big teeth, right? Yeah, it's absolutely. amazing. And it's very, very different and so much more fun too than hungry hippo, you know, even though as a game, it was really fun, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Uh, let me, um, okay. So if we were going to list things that we dentists do wrong sometimes, um, then you might put the hungry hippo approach up there pretty high. What else do you think we do wrong? Uh, we, I always love hearing about other people's mistakes because maybe you can help me make fewer ones, but what do you, what do you see when you're out there uh, yeah. online and stuff that you're like, oh, oh, you could do that so much better. Yeah, for sure. Well, actually, okay. So I have three common mistakes and if I talk too much, just shut me off and I'll stop. But <laughs> I'll go through. You're fascinating. You keep talking. <laughs> These are my favorite three. There probably are like 30, but I'll just, I'll just do three quick ones. Common mistake number one, dentists jump into a relationship with the marketing company without making sure they are the right fit for them. So just as with any new relationship, your compatibility with your marketing team should be tested, questioned, and at the very least considered. The last thing you want and the last thing they want is to consciously walk into a situation where both parties feel disjointed or misunderstood. You want to feel heard, right? Each of us do. So in terms of choosing a marketing company, you want a team you can trust, one that's in your corner cheering you on, ready to be your long-term partner, possibly even an advisor. So one great question to ask I would recommend is, who will I be working with on a regular basis? How available are they? A lot of marketing agencies have, as you know, high turnover with account reps or multiple people managing one project or client. So it's definitely a very fair question to ask. When you hire a marketing company, you're essentially hiring new teammates. So whether remote or on site, they need to be responsive, communicative, and dependable. Um, check out, you know, like the company's about or team section of their website before your first call. Do they feel approachable? Um, do you get to even see the team at all? 
you know, even if it's on Zoom, when, when do you have your first phone call? Ask them about what their responsiveness policy is or if they even have one. We actually have a resource and I can send this to you, Laura, and you could put this in the show notes. Um, it's an amazing article that we created because we found that, so we, we hear these really horror stories of people coming to us that have had terrible marketing company experiences. And so, which is incredibly unfortunate. Um, so we created this resource called 13 questions. You should ask your dental marketing company. Uh, and it's just packed full of, of cues, you know, for you to think through just to make sure that that relationship is the right fit for you. Mm-hmm. So that would be common mistake one. Um, okay. I, I want to say something about that. Yes. So I used to, when I was new owner, mm-hmm. I'd bought like a small town practice where everybody got two bite wings a year and nobody got perio maintenance. Nobody got, you know, their guns measured or whatever. And there was no website, just like it was um, a listing in the yellow pages. <laughs> right. And that was all we had. So I was like, I'm going to get a website. And I think I paid, um, I don't know, $1,500 or something for one of those like cookie cutter. Um, I won't say which company it was because maybe they've improved since then but I had that website for a long time and if I wanted a change I had this like this one email address that everybody wrote to to make their requests and it was like throwing it into the ether you had no idea who was going to read it or write back to you or anything so I love hearing about a responsiveness policy I I didn't even know that was a thing but how likely to choose to work with a company where you have a relationship with someone and you know, they have guidelines for how soon they're supposed to write you back. Totally. Yeah. Like we have a 24 hour response rule with our, you know, internally with our team, but also with clients. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and, and typically this is our account managers that are client facing with all of our people and yeah, but they typically don't even wait 24 hours. That's almost like, that's the longest you can wait. So tip, you know, our team is known for being really responsive and, um, usually within a few hours, you know, we all give clients a response or we try our best too. So yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. Okay. The other number two. number two. Okay. Now you brought up doing, starting with the templated website. So listen, this is I'm going to, I'm going to say my second common mistake is settling for a (laughs) templated (laughs) website to save cost and time. Now, listen, everybody, this is, there's no shame if that's what you, you have right now, or if that's where you began, like we get it. You have to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. Um, Let me tell you though, why we're not a fan of templated websites. And it, it really um, compliments Laura, what you and I were talking about the things that build trust with patients and templated websites typically don't. So it, patients take about 10 seconds or less to decide if they like you and trust you. And your website, your homepage in particular, is the first impression they have of your practice. So if they land there and they don't immediately feel like it's an accurate representation of what they're looking for, they bounce. Mm-hmm. So if they can't find the information they want, like who you are, what your office looks like, what they can expect as far as services, experience, it becomes harder and harder for those patients to feel like they can trust you. It opens the door to more questions and more surprises when and if they you know, do come to your office for the first time. So more than anything, patients don't want to be surprised. So don't surprise them, wow them. So instead you can win your patients trust from the first impression with a site that is the opposite, right? Beautiful design, intentionally written, um, using custom photography and video that tells your story. Yeah, that's great. If okay. you land on the page and it's just like this happy, smiling, obviously models. And then, like we said, we offer crowns, veneers, bridges, <laughs> and and implants. Which one do you want? It's like, oh, okay. well, then like you're more likely to get people who chose you because you were close to them or you take their insurance or some other reason that doesn't build trust at all, right? Like when someone says, oh, I chose you because you're close. I'm like, crap, that means we're starting at zero here. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. <laughs> My trust a little bit more, but okay. All right, that was great. 
Right. Number three, to your point, you're like the the stock images that we often see, you know, repeated over over the U.S. on hundreds and hundreds of different you know dental practices. My common mistake number three is stock photography. So this is one of the biggest reasons that Studio Eighty Eight exists, and one of the greatest motivations in why we are devoted to changing and elevating dental marketing. It's a crime to humanity. My words. <laughs> that so much of dental marketing is full of the same stock photos. When a practice website should be telling a story of who you are, why you got into dentistry and photos of your patient faces that you love to serve. So custom photography wins patients. I'll just tell you why, you know, really quickly. Again, we talked about trust. So first and foremost, to win over a patient, you need to establish trust. Um, We all know that going to the dentist has a reputation for being uncomfortable, scary, or even painful. So custom photography provides a unique and powerful opportunity to just, to really um, show firsthand how your practice is different and break that stigma and begin to build trust before that patient even walks through those doors. Um, Second connection, by leading with photography that showcases real patients in your space, smiling, laughing with staff, you know, during their appointment, you're giving the viewer authentic moments to connect with. Um, Last, beauty. This one's a no-brainer. Photography can and should be beautiful. There's so much aesthetic value in showcasing your practice in a way that's both creative, attractive. Not only is it easy on the eyes, but it also reinforces your brand, brand and your values. For instance, it's the one thing to build a brand that says that you provide a unique dental experience, but showing that through real images takes it to another level. Um, we like to, we have this kind of internal uh, kind of tagline, and I don't know, communication. We say, don't just tell a potential patient about your practice, show them. Um, and I have to mention the value also of video here. And when you came to see us, we obviously not only did photography, but we did video. And um, there's a quote that says, if a picture is worth a thousand words, what is a video worth? And I think my question is, well, what better way? I mean, what better way to really truly tell your story than video? Videos can be used on your practice website, social media, digital ads. You can use videos to talk about your practice, explain different you know, procedures, even capture patient testimonials. It's one of the greatest resources we have in storytelling. And of course, it's super complimentary to custom photography. So those are my kind of my top three <laughs> common dental mistakes. I love um, You know, there's a lot of women who listen to my practice, I mean, my podcast, who have put their heart and soul into like the atmosphere of their practice. Mm-hmm. That's important for a lot of women. They want it to be welcoming and comfortable, or they want it to reflect their personality or whatnot. And stock photography would not communicate that to anyone who was looking right? For a certain vibe. Yes, hundred percent. If you put all of your heart and soul into making that practice feel a certain way, look a certain way, you can, you should showcase that on your website because people are, and then again, like, you know, we've said earlier, you will attract that patient that is looking for that type of experience. Yes. Yeah. That's so smart. Yeah. It's like, why hide it? Like it's, it's worth to just, um, find the right marketing company, you know, someone who's really going to help you discover your story, um, help you tell it and share it, you know, in the digital space. Um, It's worth it to show off your story, your brand, your expertise, and just go dig a little bit deeper. Mm -hmm. And it's so nice to have someone like, I'll tell you a secret about dentists. Um, They feel overwhelmed a lot and they want things to be better. They want to move forward with their practice, but um, they don't feel like they have a lot of like time to um to devote to any one thing so they love it when there's someone they can hire who can do the thing that they're looking for um so anyway what was my point just a second it's great to know that there are people like you out there who can take that worry off of their hands 
Mm -hmm. And like we said at the very beginning of the podcast, does anybody need a snack? <laughs> you could even take care of that for, a no. uh, for, uh, <laughs> for the photo shoot and, and all that stuff. And, and for those who are listening, before I was allowed to make an appointment with Studio 88, they're like, okay, first we need to learn about you. And I had like this little assignment where I had to <laughs> go through and tell them my story and even tell them like what colors I liked and and what um vibes I liked and stuff like that because they won't do it for you unless they know your story so but it was kind of a fun assignment it wasn't really that time consuming it was just it was fun to be like yeah what's my story so that was amazing and then you guys took it from there which was great yes yeah the discovery process is uh one of my favorite parts of the whole thing really because I think it I've seen it help you know dentists really clarify their why and it really is just a progression of very simple questions but there's a whole formula to the way that we call it it's our brand creator um piece of homework and the way it's designed and the flow is intentional and so it's amazing it I think that it brings clarity uh, we've had dentists that just have light bulb moments um, you know, and kind of like honing in on what their specific voice is or how they want to, you know, say something. And so, yeah, it's a great yeah. help for someone who's been kind of stuck on their own hamster wheel. That can yeah. be sort of therapeutic mm -hmm. to sit back and be like, why am I even doing this? Yes. And think about their why so that they can get ready to communicate it. So that was amazing as well. Yeah. And you have a little, like you have a um, one that anybody can go through that's kind of about making a story for your practice, right? Tell me about that. Yes. So um, you and I, I mentioned this before we started recording earlier, but if you feel stumped and you're hearing all this and you're like, okay, so I have a story, you know, this is intriguing or interesting to me. I don't know that I'm, you know, maybe you're ready to take the leap and you would love to set up a phone call with us. We would love that, of course. Um, but also we have created a resource that's been incredible to so many, you know, dental practice owners. It's called the story driven marketing guide. And it really walks you through, um, all of our philosophy for marketing. It would also give you, it would really be the next step. If you were interested in, you know, hearing more about this, getting to know more, even, even there's tons of resources packed within, um, and I'll give you the link and you can put it in, in the show notes, but, um, the discovery process, we put that in there as well. So even that brain creator, the first three exercises it's in there. And so you can just, you can sit down with a cup of tea or a glass of wine and like walk through your why, you know, why you got into, into dentistry, um, and maybe just uncover some pleasant surprises, you know, and pull them out of your heart and head and, and see what's there. Um, and, and I think it's, this guy really serves as a reminder that we all have a unique story and we're all on a mission to make the world a better place, especially as women. And I think sometimes we need reminded of that. So if anything, walking through this guide would be a, a great confidence boost. Yeah. I mean, we all need to take a minute to think about why we're here what we're doing so that we're not just stuck on the hamster wheel. So that's amazing. Anybody can use it because I really did have a good time and I'm pretty sure I'd wine with my not tea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same. I'll join you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this has been super fun. Thank you so much again for setting aside the time to do this for us and to impart some of your amazing wisdom that you've gained sometimes the hard way and it's amazing um and we'll have the link to that brand creator um on the show notes as well which anyone can find at loveyourpractice.net um that's the web that's my website and that's where the podcast lives that's where the show notes will be for anyone who feels inspired by this conversation awesome Thank you, Laura, for having me. If anybody wants to be friends on Instagram, I love making new friends. I'm at Joanna F. Scott. So that's Joanna 
F as in Frank Scott, although my name, my middle name is not Frank. <laughs> I have to say it's not Joanna Frank Scott. Okay. It's not Frank Scott for the clarification. <laughs> and you can find, of course, um, studio, our, our website is s8e8.com. And you can just check us out there and um, reach out if you like. Yeah. We'll put that in the show notes too. Okay. Awesome. All right. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you, Laura. Appreciate you. Thanks for listening to my podcast today. I'm Dr. Laura Mock signing out. Remember, if you want to take that free course on correcting your employees, text the words love your employees with no spaces to 66866. Thanks, ladies. See you next time. Thank you for listening to Love Your Practice with Dr. Laura Mock. I would love to meet you. To join our movement, find the Facebook group called Love Your Practice and request to join. If you can't find it, just send me a message and I'll add you. You'll find me there helping all of my ladies to fall in love with their businesses and have a better life.